Hello Voozers, Roy here with another video on creating. In this one I'll be deriving this mesh and making some beveled text using GIMP. Now this mesh has individual slots that will let you add opacity so you can make your own charms for it. First I'm going to throw on an outfit for creating in. And then I like to load a different room other than the default. For accessories, I sometimes make my avatar bigger, and I like to zoom in nice and close. In GIMP, I start with a large image size, and then I make the foreground color gray for the text. And I make the text size large as well. You can change the options to increase the space between each of the letters. This separation will make it easier when I'm making the opacity for the individual charms. I then set the layer to image size, which also converts the text layer into a regular layer. I then use the color select tool to select the text, and duplicate this layer. With the text still selected, I go to filters, decor, and then add bevel. Here there is a slider to adjust the thickness. I also make sure work on copy is deselected since I only want to work on the one file. With the text on the bottom layer selected, I create a new layer and then I choose the gradient fill option. For the type of fill, I use shaped. I hit the beveled layer so I could see what I'm doing. I change the foreground color back to white, and then when you click and drag within the shape, it should look something like this. I then go up to filters and choose emboss, and I can adjust the angle and the depth and elevation of the text. This makes it look a little bit more 3D. There used to be an older version of GIMP that would actually do both the beveling and the embossing in one step, but you can use multiple layers and adjust them accordingly. I usually like to use soft light or I reduce the layer's opacity. I then use the base layer to select the text again and create another new layer. And I fill it in with the white. I then go to filters, noise, and choose the HSV noise and turn the sliders all the way up. I then go to filters, blur, linear motion blur and adjust the length and angle as I want. I then set that layer to soft light. I decide to set the beveled layer to hard light and duplicate it a few times to bring out the contrast a bit more. And for my particular style, I use the lasso tool on the base layer and decide to lighten up the Roy part. I then make a new file that is 256 wide and 512 high. Back on the text file, I hide the bottom face of the black and then create new from visible and then I can copy each of the individual letters over and make new files with them by pasting them. I quickly glance back to the provided opacity maps to make sure mine should be centered all right. Satisfied with my placement, I export this as a JPEG file. I then repeat the process for each letter, exporting them as individual files.
To make the opacity maps, I make a copy of the letter layer, and then I go to colors and then colorize. And then I slide the brightness all the way up to make it white. I can then repeat the process on each of the letters by pressing Ctrl F as a shortcut. I then export them as their own separate files by using the JIF extension. I then repeat the process for all the letters by pressing Ctrl Shift E and giving them each their new name for the opacity. Back in the InVu editor, I can start adding my textures and opacities. Each of the gummy bears is color coordinated, so I know which letter needs to go where. And with each letter, I have to also add the corresponding opacity map. I then repeat the process for each of the slots and each of the letters. And once everything is finally put into place, I can press Apply Changes. With the chain links, I copied over the texture and the UV maps provided from the page. And then I just took some of the texture that I made from the L here and copied that over. It's a little bit of a lazy way to make the texture there. But it's also the fastest way to make sure that it all matches. I also added in some additional shading and highlights as well. Since the Y didn't really line up with the uh, link, I actually decided to rotate it. So I took the texture and the opacity, and I linked them together before rotating. It took me a couple tries before I had it centered, but sometimes I'm picky about things like that. I then went back to the product page and snagged the UVs and textures so that I could make the main mesh links. I copied the texture from the charm links for the main links as well. I spent a lot of time adjusting the brightness and contrast until I was happy with how it looked. I consider my necklace mostly finished now, although I might reduce the overall texture sizes to reduce the KBS. But I also did want to mention about uh, using blending in products like this when you are using opacities. Now, in this case, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but you'll notice when you go behind something else that uses blending, such as this filter, that it will actually make the charm disappear. So unless you actually want your product to use transparency, it's best to keep that off. Now when I move my avatar behind the filter again, you can see that the charm doesn't disappear and it will remain there with the other ones. I had fun working on this project and I hope you learned something from the video. You can find me on social media, Instagram at InvuRoy, Twitter at InvuRoy, and of course you can find me on Invu at Roy, that's also my shop's name as well, if you want to check out the things I've made. <laughs>